First, you know, as always, I appreciate it. miss you guys. So I appreciate you being on. Um, real thankful. Uh, just, you know, Sacred Heart, Coach Latina, for going through all the protocol to play this game today. They, they, they were awesome. I want to really thank our, our medical team, you know, Dr. Bouchard, Dr. Womack, Rich Campbell, Pat Hobbs for all the all that went into playing a basketball game today. So they've done an awesome job, and I'm very thankful for our guys, um, all the sacrifices that they made, you know, so that we could tip the ball off today. Um, I think you saw a team that, you know, hasn't played a lot with referees. I think you saw a team that hasn't played against other opponents today, but we, we do some good things. I think uh, – we really shared the ball. We rebounded. Our defense not 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 good, but uh, at times uh, stifling. Uh, but we need to get better in so many ways. But it was nice just to get up and down the court and play some basketball against some other people. I know our kids were really excited, and um, you know we got we got two more games in the next few days, so we got to rest up. And uh, obviously, we hope Geo's okay. Um, but we'll uh, we'll keep uh, getting through these obstacles. For the question from Jerry Carino. Hi, Steve. Can you, what can you tell us about Gio? Is it it's a left ankle? Whatever you can tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, I really can't tell you much. He's got you know a bad ankle sprain. That's all I know right now. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Rich is the best. So we'll see what Rich can do and uh, and Gio and uh, he'll get a ton of treatment tomorrow and you know we'll have to figure it out then. Take the next question from Bobby Darren. Coach, can you talk about the decision to start Cliff and, and maybe mention a little bit about the game that he had today? Well, I mean, uh, obviously first game 14 and 11, that's, you know, awesome. I thought he was dominant rebounding the ball too in the first half. And, um, you know, Cliff's a worker. He's a great kid. You know, I really I like our five spot, obviously. I like it a lot. Um, he and Miles didn't miss a field goal today. So 11 for 11 from that position. Um, and obviously their presence, you know, blocking shots. But, um, you know, I'm not a big who starts, who doesn't start fan. I think we have, you know, seven, eight guys that could easily start. And you already see the obstacles we're dealing with. Geo's, you know, going to be down. And, you know, so it's nice to have a bench and, and um, really excited about how Cliff's been practicing, excited about how he's been playing, um, you know, and along with Miles. Miles is awesome. You know, uh, coming off the bench gives us another dimension, too. So those two are going to play a lot of minutes. Take the next question from Matt Sugam. Sorry about that. I was muted. Uh, what was it like after building up the rack into the environment that it was last year to come into the environment it was today? And yeah. how do you go about having guys kind of create their own energy without the fans to feed off? Yeah, I mean, you know, today was new. You know, it was, the whole thing was new, um, waiting for the other team to get tested, waiting for those results, you know, playing in front of nobody. You know, our guys are kind of figuring it out. Um, they have to generate their own excitement, their own energy. I think some of our guys really like to play. Um, so, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in an empty gym or you're in a full gym. You know, you hope you get guys that just want to play basketball. And I think our guys were ready to play somebody else today. And uh, you know, we'll keep figuring out this environment and uh, trying to take advantage for what we can take advantage of. I thought they were kind of locked in. They were they were pretty good focus. I know they can hear me now when I'm coaching them, so I kind of like that part of it. But certainly very different and nothing I've ever experienced. We'll take the next question from Brian Fonseca. Uh, hey, Steve. Uh, Paul did miss a shot, seven assists, two steals, one turnover. What did you think of how he played? He looked as comfortable as he ever has. Yeah, I mean, Paul is really, uh, you know, he's been tremendous. He's a worker. I mean, he devours film. Um, you know, he has a really good feel. As you can see, seven assists, one turnover today, too. So uh, he worked on his jump shot, you know, all summer long. You know, he had a really good off season. You know, I thought he and Montez and, and Jacob Young had really good off seasons, and you could see it. You know, the results show the work that you did, and uh, he's really important because he's a guy that can play multiple positions. He's got a really good feel, and he's got good toughness. So, um, you know, excited about him. He's got to get better, too, on the defensive end, uh, along with all the other guys, but, uh, you know, excited about what he brings. He brings so much uh, to our team. 
We'll go back to Jerry Colino, and then Bobby will be after him. Steve, what, what went into the decision to uh, to kneel during the Star Spangled Banner, and, and, and what was that like for you and your, your players? Yeah, you know, um, you know, it's it's like anything. You know, I think our kids, you know, uh, make personal choices and decisions. We're really good with those things. We support our players and any of those things. And, you know, we're trying to bring people together here. And so, um, you know, that was just a personal choice by each guy on our team, you know, how they felt. And I respect, you know, the personal choices that they make and want to stand by my guy. So, uh, uh, you know, I think that was uh, important. We'll go to Bobby next. Coach, if foul shooting kind of struggled again, can you talk about that and maybe what uh, measures you're going to take to correct it? Bobby, let's go. We need you. We need you to teach foul shooting. Um, you know, we, we, we have, uh, you know, struggled in that area, but uh, we got good foul shooters. And, um, you know, today, too, I think first time lights are on, too. Um, we didn't shoot it particularly well from three-point land, and we've been shooting great in practice. Um, so, like, I feel really a lot better about our ability to shoot the ball. But obviously today, you know, there's a few areas that we didn't do a great job in. Uh, but we rebounded and we defended, and that always gives you a chance to win a basketball game. So we'll continue to work on those things. And, um, you know, some good foul shooters, too, um, um, that normally makes, make free throws. So uh, continue to work on it. It'll be work in progress. Take the next question from James Cratch. Hey, Steve, you mentioned, you know, that you had to wait for Sacred Heart to get tested. I'm just curious, like, how nerve-wracking is that for you, especially knowing the women had the issue earlier in the day? And have you kind of told the players that it's almost inevitable that one of these non-conference games, you're going to get a positive and you're not going to be able to play? Well, I mean, you know, COVID conference, non-conference, it doesn't discriminate between the two. But, you know, it's nerve-wracking every day you get tested, you know, and uh, – you know, you just hope that, you know, the guys are healthy and, and, and they're being, you know, really smart about it. Uh, but the other team needs to test the day before and the day of. And until everyone's cleared, you know, the game's not on. So you're always on pins and needles. I, I just – I knew our guys wanted to play today. So it would have been really disappointing if they, you know, didn't get a chance to. And, and, and they were ready to play. They were excited about playing somebody else. So I'm glad we had that opportunity. I'm glad Sacred Heart did all the things they needed to do. I'm glad our guys and our, you know, medical protocol here is great. And so I'm glad everyone was able to enjoy a basketball game today. And uh, now we move on. We got another one right around the corner. Uh, Jerry Carino, if you have one more. No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. I'll take one from Brian Fonseca. Uh, yes, Steve. Uh, Gio's been the leader for this team, emotional leader for – his, his career. I guess what was the reaction from the guys seeing him get injured at halftime and just, just throw the game? You know, you, you know, I, I, honestly, we talk about obstacles all the time, you know, and now we you throw in the COVID obstacle too that, you know, you need to be deep, um, you know, ankle sprains happen, guys get injured, guys get sick, you know, next guy got to, you know, be ready to go. And, and uh, uh, you know, we hate to have any of our players out, especially Gio. Uh, but guys stepped up, and they're going to have to. You know, tomorrow's going to be a prep day without them, for sure. And then we'll get get ready to play the next game. So, guys have opportunities now, um, and hopefully they'll continue to take advantage of those opportunities. And when he comes back, we'll even be better. Thanks, guys. We're gonna we're gonna call it there and let coach go, and bring in some players afterwards. Thanks, coach, very much. Happy Thanksgiving, Steve. Hey, guys, have a happy Thanksgiving, all Rutgers Nation out there. Thank you. Thanks for watching. All right. Appreciate the first uh, virtual game uh, press conference. Unique. Have a good one, guys.